Okay, I think what we're doing here is we need to hit both of these, no, all three of these towers with an electrical dealy bopper going around the sides. So we're going to have to kind of do the thing where we help transport it by hitting switches that hit panels. Oh, interesting. Um, Alright, already this isn't doing what I thought it would. Okay, what's this one do when I hit it? Yeah, it brings up a shield over there. Okay, so that's really interesting because... I think I'm going to need to have two of these going at once. Um, it looks like the bomb eventually needs to go here. And... And I don't know what all the rest of this stuff is yet. Um, well, anyway, welcome to Crosscode. I was gonna make a, I was gonna make an episode that before the episode I was going to make a joke, and I was gonna say like, "Welcome back to my podcast," where last time I had a descent into madness, um, and then I thought, you know, it would be like a funny title for, for a podcast is, like, Descent into Podcast, and I wonder if anybody's ever done that before. Oh, that, like, almost worked. That's crazy how that almost worked. But yeah, we're going to be less introspective this time if we can manage it. I, I think I got a lot of that out of my system. Um, if you guys ever have, like, questions, though, like, want to poke my brain about moral philosophy stuff, because I don't always get the time to talk about everything I want to. And that's sort of, like, I, I don't get a ton. I, I think it could be hard for me to say all of this stuff in a way that feels clear. Um, I love talking about that kind of stuff. Um, thanks to Project Isekai, a, uh character of mine is getting, like, a little bit popular in, um, Oscar and Gage's spheres, which is, uh, Banquo. Um, as you might know, he was originally a D&D character of mine. And this was, like, all the kinds of stuff Banquo was about, was about. He was... You know, sometimes when we get really into an OC, an OC is, like, some kind of extension of ourselves. And in this case, Banquo was this, like, part of me that really got heady about existentialism and philosophy. But yeah, enough about that. How do we do this puzzle? Um, what I don't see right now... Okay. So I can send the bomb over that way. Right? And... I can use this to send it to the other side. And then it'll go around here and I can use this to send it to that side. Oh man, and it like it needs to be holding the bomb too, which make, makes it tough. But okay, I think I think I get the idea of it. It just might take me a couple tries here. Okay, but like that, I'm gonna have to be a lot quicker than that. Do I get to keep the bomb at least when this comes over? Uh, no.
Okay, so I need to get that. Then... Oh! Oh, that will... I don't need to start another one of these. Cool. Okay. Okay, so... Move that along down there. Uh, I was a little too slow. Okay, hit that button. Yeah, so the other the other bolt is going to do its job. Nice. Okay, and now I can just fire this through here. Very good. Alright, did I have my timer going for that? Yes, I did. Um, okay. Because when you use the lightning, it comes towards you, not away from you. Yeah, so that was a little different. And now what, I try to guide it the other way towards me? No, that doesn't make sense. How, how do I get this? Because it comes, it comes towards me. We've established that. It comes towards me wherever I am, not towards the projectile that hit it. So maybe this will be just enough to get it to, like... Oh, it doesn't bounce like that. There's no, there's no diagonal here. Okay, is that going to hit the wall? It is, okay. Okay, I just wasn't trusting in the puzzle. We have another guardian. Yeah, so what else have I been doing? I've been, um... Oh, that's cool how the shield teleports. I like that a lot. So I'm going to use Wave when it's just attacking me and Shock when I'm doing damage. There we go. Um, I just beat another game off of my um, Steam Sember to-do list, past Steam Sember games, which was... Um, uh, Transistor, which is great. Uh, I really like Bastion. I really like Hades. It was cool to finally play Transistor, which is by the same group, Supergiant Games, by the same dev. Um, I'm gonna get to Pyre eventually, too. And I actually knew a lot about, um... Oh, boy. Okay. So, can we please... Nice. Okay, it's gonna be a little bit harder to make this shield work, but... To, to, to get this to where I need it, to break the shield, it's gonna be a little bit more work, but... I think we can get it. Nice. Nice! Yeah, I thought Transistor was really good. It's a game that 
honestly, I could probably replay a bunch of times, so I've decided to move on. It's got a very interesting... It starts, like, very immediate rest. Like, it's a very high concept. Uh, that was a little too slow. Oh! I actually got the damage in there. More importantly, I have him jolted. Okay. And throw your shield. And... Oh, wow, that actually, like... That actually stunned him out of his attack, too. Yeah, that's great. Good game. Good game, Transistor. I recommend it. It's on a lot of platforms, so check it out. It took me about eight hours to beat the first time, and it feels like something that I could probably replay a bunch of times. Um, I'm still... I don't know if I talked about it yet, but I'm still playing a Yakuza Like a Dragon. Um, really enjoying it. I'm playing it kind of slowly. And I'm playing the original Metal Gear games. I beat... I got the collection and I beat uh, Metal Gear 1 for the first time. And I'm playing Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. That, those are the MSX games, to be clear. Not... Not Metal Gear Solid, which came later. Um. Yeah, so I can't make this job with I, I can't this job. I can't make this jump without the platforms. First of all. Is there Can I get this to come over to me over here? Yes, I can. Good. I'm having a little trouble getting this right how I want it, though. This, like, little lip in the wall is a big part of that problem. Okay. Maybe I, maybe I could cheese this a little bit. I probably shouldn't. Generally, the way you're supposed to do the puzzle is the easiest solution to all these puzzles, but this is stuck, and I do not know how to get it out. Oh. Okay. Okay. That worked. Um, yeah, I guess now we need to get it back onto the center platform so that I can get a bridge to make that jump. Yeah, it's kind of neat playing the original Metal Gear games. Um, Metal Gear is a series I know a lot about. So, yeah, I'm going to play through all the Metal Gear Solid games, even though I know the endings to them already. Oh, I see. That's going to be kind of a tricky jump there. Okay, I was trying to ricochet this. Let's hit it. There we go. Uh, big brain moves there. Okay, so it looks like I need to break through that first, though. And that I'm not... Maybe this isn't cheesing the angle. Maybe that's exactly how I'm supposed to do this. Okay. Okay, very nice. Then... Yeah, I'm glad these walls stay down now once I've broken both of them. Also, there's a nice, like, kind of lock-on to those platforms there, which I appreciate. So I got two doors here now. Um... 
Oh, okay, I came through here before. Yeah, this is back to the outside of this building. Got it. Um, Nugget is joining us here in the office again. She is laying very comfortably on the floor. Okay, so I guess that's all I need to accomplish over on this side then, and now I can go over to the other side. Hi! Hey. Finally, we meet again. That means we all have defeated the bird dude. Dude was fast, but not fast enough to avoid my punches. Anyway, what a lucky coincidence that both of you are here. Why is that? You know, I met Lee quite some time ago, but I still don't know that much about her. Really? Well, there's still plenty of time to change that, right? Right, but you see, with Lee's vocabulary, it's very hard to ask her anything specific. So I had this idea. Since you and Lee share the same past, can't I just ask you instead? Um, like, what's your favorite dish? I don't know. Don't you think this is weird? Lee and I aren't exactly the same person anymore. We, of course, but like, 90% or so, right? You can't just put a number on that. Come on, what's there to lose? For instance, it's an... Uh, for instance, it's embarrassing, and I hardly know you. That's all? I can talk about myself as well. We'll be best friends in no time. Actually, I'd rather just continue with the dungeon. Bye. Hey, don't just run away like that. She's just trying to be a friend. Okay, yeah, so like the right side first, you kind of walk through like, a hallway around the lobby of the last puzzle. Yeah, this really... This dungeon really is, like, putting my puzzle solving to the test. I'm happy to say I haven't been using guides for anything in this dungeon. I've been figuring it all out myself, and that feels good. I'd like to check again soon how close I am to some more, like, pieces of equipment I could be getting. Because I think I want my final build to just be the ascended forms of all the equipment I am wearing. Except the straw hat. For that, I'd rather be using the ascended, uh, serene bubble, I guess. Yeah, but the straw hat is nice for gathering stuff. So until I have the as ascended version, I'm kind of using the straw hat to help me gather the things. Okay, setting those first, because I can already kind of see where this is going. Um... Yeah, every time you walk into a puzzle room, there is this, like, kind of moment of panic. I don't think I could do this room yet, though, judging by the other door that there is. Yeah, I have to do- I have to bring something here first to put the- the blob in that room to do a puzzle with. Okay, other totem pole thing. So... Yeah, what of these is the safest to blow up first? I'm thinking this one. Okay, and that gives me another hothead here. Yeah, in case you don't remember, the ultimate goal with these things is to not let any of the of them match. So you have to look ahead of what's higher up on the totem pole. You don't want to have, like, two purples at a time, because if you do, they're going to get shields and be a bigger pain to deal with. Yeah, using uh, the wave rage move, because it has a health steal. Yeah, 
Yeah, I guess I could just melee these things, too. I I've been using range, I guess, just because they're using range. It would be faster to melee them, but then I would also go into overload faster. Okay, so far so good. And then... Yeah, we'll do this one next. Probably need more key. Okay. Get some life steal with my range art here. And then back to this. Okay, so I'm actually gonna clear this one without giving it a shield at all. Yeah, now I'm just kind of going to town because I'm almost at the end. I don't care if I overload. I do love my little goose. He's a very calming presence. Okay, so I need to get the blob out of this side building first. Um... Okay, so what all do we have over here, I guess? Yeah, th this is simple enough. I can hit that fan. Let's move, move this platform. And then... Am I supposed to do the same thing again? Or at least basically the same thing again, just from this angle. Okay, that's kind of neat. That's a neat gimmick. It's a neat puzzle. The the light the shock ability that makes it come towards you is a very nice tool for helping you reposition the blobs. I like that a lot, that there is a way to pull it towards you, too. Uh... okay. Oh, look at that! Okay, I can do that to destroy... ...waves and things. Um... then it's not like I can get this to come back to me. Okay, so I need to put the bubble in there first. Got it. Okay, so that goes to the other side, and then I do that. Cool. Uh, don't... Okay. That platform's not too far away, is it? Oh my gosh, I can't even jump to it like that? Shoot. Okay, well, the, the wall here stays down, so that was pretty cool. I like that a lot. Um, okay, so let's, I guess, get this bubble on there first. And then... I'm trying to get this over to the other side that I wanted at. Um... Okay, so I think I can use the warp down there, kind of like so. Yes. Then... It looks like that's going to grow back, so let me think about what I'm doing before I do it here. Okay, so... I need to do that, and then... I mean, is the is the steam going to go through that thingy? It should, right? 
Yes, good. Okay. And then I just need to get this to come back over to me. Let me start my timer back up then, too. Um, timer, timer, timer. Stop using ice. It's not helpful here. And then... Whoops. No! No! Oh, my God! Fudge! That sucks. Oh! Well, it lets me back over to this side, but then it doesn't put me... Oh, my gosh. Okay, so let's stop being dumb, hit that switch, and then... Wait, I hit the switch. Now, uh, now, now that means it'll have the thing on the other side of the wall. Yeah, it'll put it back into this room. That's great. That's that's what we want. Sorry, I like forgot like the nature of what we were doing here. Oh, and we're gonna have another uh, sniper battle here. Okay. Okay, so for the most part, they don't fire. I was confused for a second because it, like, wasn't actually taking its shot, and that was weird. So I'm gonna need... Gonna need to fire this through and teleport it to the other side there. Whoops. Oh, not what I meant. Okay, now I now I understand why this other one was over. I was like, what was the what is the point of that rift up there? Now I know, it's in case you get yourself stuck like a dummy. Ow. Yeah, these snipers are pretty good. Okay, I need to get this to the bottom side of the wall. Get it over here. Uh, maybe scooch it up just a little bit that way, and then... Good. Ow. Yeah, it's a good thing I don't really keep the damage from any of this. What's this fun do? Okay, it gives me a warp to warp to. Then... I think that means I want to get you down here. But the... This other one's in the way, is the problem. Okay, let, let, let me try this. Let me just see if this works. It does work. Great. Okay. I had my doubts for a moment, but it worked out. Yeah, I just gotta find my window that I can do this and then I can fight these two guys. I love how they have the cloaks that they cast off. Alright, stay still, you big-nosed little weirdos. Speaking of big-nosed little weirdos, I just uh, saw um, the new Ghibli movie, um, uh, the, the Boy and the Heron, which I thought was actually really, really good. I went in kind of... The, the last time I saw a Ghibli movie in theaters was a while ago, actually. I think I might have been in high school or maybe, like, early college, but it was um, The Secret of Arietti, which is a movie I like a lot, actually. It's just, like, I don't know. I wasn't expecting it to blow, blow me away. I kind of had a feeling that this was going to be kind of one of the, like, middling efforts of Studio Ghibli, which would still make it great. Um, also, the one critic I heard talk about it wasn't, like, a huge fan, but they just, 
this just might not be her kind of movie. Um, I I loved it. It's super weird. Um, a lot of stuff is like, what? Like, that's so weird. Why did that happen like that? But it's kind of like, it's got a lot of stuff you can chew on. And if this last episode, if the previous episode was any indication, I can have a great time just thinking endlessly about things. I am a big, it's not that deep bro kind of guy. Like, the kind of guy you say that to, that it's not that deep bro. I got that response on a YouTube comment, actually, recently. Um, which, I did something I don't normally do, and I, like, commented on a video to, like, give a critique. I, I think it's because I've just been so, like, kind of aggravated lately and, like, feeling a need to, like, speak my mind that I gave my opinion about a video. Not even to say it was bad, but, you know to give, like, constructive criticism, but also you know how that is. People don't always take things as... It wasn't... So, so it was the Try Guys, and no, the Try Guys did not, like, respond to my criticism of a video. It was just other people saying, like, dude, it's not that deep. Um, I'm still a really big fan of the Try Guys, um, as I've said before, and the last year, and since losing, like, one of their major members, losing Ned, um... They've really been, like, trying a lot of things to see what sticks, which I really respect about them. I I have really liked this era of the Try Guys. We're seeing more of, um... Other people, like, seeing more of, like, Miles and Quessy and, um... And Johnny and Johnny Cakes. A lot of other really big talents. Put this back the way I had it before. Yeah, so that... This area of the dungeon has been mainly heat and waves, so that's probably what we have to do to solve everything here. Let's use a lot of heat and wave. Um, though I think I always use a lot of chalk with this thing just for repositioning purposes. Okay, so I can get that there. But is that where I... <laughs> but is that where I want that? I don't actually know. Uh, okay, so let's freeze this to get it down there, and then we can get it into this bubble. Okay, and then maybe we can... try and figure out a way to teleport it out. Um, yeah, recently it seemed like, um, Try Guys and a lot of other, like, older big YouTube names have tried to get into the gaming sphere a lot, a lot. Kind of like Smosh Games, which I've recently gotten really into, and I think Smosh Games has spent the last ten years, like, cultivating and getting a group of people who know and like games a lot, and then some who, like, are less familiar but are funny to have around them, and I think Try Guys are kind of just jumping into it haphazardly. Um... But, like, that's a take. There's lots of people in the comments who are enjoying it, so I don't want to, like, take away anybody's fun. Um, what was kind of irking me... And, you know, maybe I am a Pokemon fanboy, because even though I can be very, very critical of... of the newer Pokemon stuff, this was a thing about Pokemon, and it was bothering me. And you could even interpret to say that... That, like, one could possibly say that I am gatekeeping to an extent, which is not my intention at all. Nice. I'm really amazed that worked, actually. Okay, so now this lets me get up here, which is cool. That's not quite what I thought would happen. Uh... No? 
No, what are you doing over there? That's not right. Yeah, so the Try Guys, they recently did, like, a live stream of them playing Mario Party. Um, and then after that, they did a live stream where they did, like, a Pokemon trivia contest. They, they did the, like, Pokemon Impossible trivia quiz that some person made. Um... And, like, every time somebody got one of them right or something, they got to, like, open up a pack of Pokemon cards. So it was combined with a, like, card, a, a like, unpacking kind of video or a, like, open the pack video. I didn't mean to... I shouldn't have. I'm getting into a lot of trouble by using the frost element when I shouldn't. And personally, I found the stream very hard to watch. And you can say, well, then why why, did, why were you wa continuing to watch the stream? I wasn't. I did stop watching it after a little while. Um, just because. And I made a whole video about, like, different kinds of Pokemon fans. Um, and how, you know, it's valid to like Pokemon however you like it. If you only like Gen 1, that's maybe fine. Um, but they are all, like... People who mainly like the older stuff. Or I should say, it was a trivia contest between Zach Quasi and Johnny. And Keith was hosting. And they were asking questions, and the scope of these questions about Pokemon was about like the entire its entire history up to Gen 9. But like Quessie and Johnny know nothing about Pokemon, and um, Zach really only kind of remembers it from 20 years ago. And that doesn't mean, like, they're not real, he's not a real Pokemon fan or anything. And, and like, Keith's the same way of, like, apparently Keith is a big Pokemon fan still and has, like, done other videos about the trading cards and stuff and more recent memory. But... They were doing these twi trivia things, and, like, none of them knew any of it. Keith was, like, rushing things along, so it wasn't even like he could... He would explain, like, why they were wrong about something. Um... I just don't think it was a very good stream, and it was very hard to watch. And I feel like it almost came with this kind of judgment of, like, anytime it was a question about newer things, they were just like, Oh, well, I don't... I, I don't know about that. I don't... I don't like the new stuff. So, like... You know, clearly they're doing it to, like, to bring in Pokemon fans. <sighs> Shoot, but I did the same thing. I got rid of... I got rid of the bubble, and I wasn't supposed to get rid of the bubble. Is there a way I can... There's not a way for me to get a bubble back into there, because clearly I'm supposed to turn into a little ice puck now and hit it against that. But I don't know how to actually get it down in there without freezing it. Okay, so I think maybe if I freeze it, then I can really quick run over while it's still a puck and knock it over there. Good. Okay. Okay. Alright, got it. Yeah, so it's not like I thought they were, like, being insensitive to Pokemon Pay or anything, like, really, like, morally... Uh, I just don't... I, I, I think as a stream, it was kind of a train wreck a little bit. But also, like, I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to, like, give critique to, like, leave a comment that they're never going to read, and it's really probably only going to serve to, like make their fans mad because they're going to, like, take it more critically than I meant it. But that is my story of how recently I got a It's Not That Deep Throw, something I have heard many times in my life because I just really like digging into stuff like that. Yeah, so I've only fought this bear kind of enemy a handful of times. Yeah, so I open that up. There we 
we go. Yeah, because he heals himself while he's eating those, so you have to, like, act fast. Yeah, bad time for an overload, but... The toughest part about this, actually, to me, is these... Is these bees that come out of it. I think I need to block the bees more, because he also heals when those hit me. But, like, for example, and I say this because I really like the Try Guys, um, but it just had a kind of, like, millennials trying to be cool with the kids kind of feel to it, I guess. And, like, a lot of times... Keith seemed to be under a lot of pressure to, like, keep the stream moving. That might have been part of it, too, and why it seemed to me like he didn't know any of it was just that he wasn't, like, engaged... He wasn't taking time to engage things. He just kept moving to the next, um... The next question or the next topic. But, like, the question would be, like, tra classic Pokemon trivia question. Um, what legendary bird does Ash see in the very first episode of the anime? Um, a lot of Pokemon fans know this one uh, because it is such an interesting story. Um, so it's multiple choice. They said uh, it was, like, Articuno, Zapdos... Lugia or ho -Oh. And Zack, you know, knowing a little bit at least about the first, like, few years of Pokemon, maybe about Generations 1 and 2, um, is like, oh, that's gotta be... He was like, okay, I know it's gotta be either Zapdos or Moltres. Or Articuno, because... Now, you guys... A lot of you guys probably just know this, um is that it is Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh appears in the very first episode of the anime, despite not being a Gen 1 Pokemon. And that is, like, a really interesting factoid, and it's because the creators already had an idea for a Gen 2 and also, like, wanted to... Um... You know, wanted to kind of present some mystery to the world. And I think when you're doing trivia things, even if it's one that, like, none of the contestants are going to know, that can work if you also, like, turn it into, like, a learning opportunity... So if Keith could, if there's some more information on the card, or Keith could be like, no, in fact, Ho-Oh appeared before it was officially introduced as a Pokemon. And then you got, like, a neat story, and it's fun. But no, it was just kind of like, ah, oh, no, you're wrong. The card says you're wrong. Next question. Very, it, it felt very dismissive of the thing it was supposedly there to celebrate. Like, you think you're there because you're all like Pokemon. How is this possible? It was right there! I don't know. It just happened. I mean... You missed it as well, right? Well, I jumped down without thinking because you were standing down here. Oh, so that's my fault now as well? Hi? Oh, hello, Lee. What? Well, we both jumped down here, but... We forgot to press that floor switch first. Oh, that sucks. So the jump handle is still off and we're stuck down here. You remember to push the switch, right? Good for you. Well, it happened. These sorts of things are, like, instant, so they probably can't... Like, even if Jorn did hit it, Apollo probably wouldn't be able to go up it. I think they're instanced to you when you press the switch. Time for some backtracking. <laughs> Aw, poor guys. Okay, so I think I'm probably gonna call it there, because also this seems like a neat side area to explore, and I bet I could get some tr treasure this way. I bet this is the, the secret to finding... A lot of the treasures. Also, I need more cone seeds. Um. And I mean, maybe it's just like. The reason why I at least thought at the time that I was commenting in good faith, I think, to be honest, I was commenting a little bit because I've just had a lot to say and I've had this feeling of like wanting my opinions to be heard extra badly. So, like, I left a comment and I left thoughts. Yeah, I think eventually we're gonna use keys to, like, open some kind of network down here. Which is very interesting. Um. Okay, this gets me back to where the, like, disappearing platform puzzle is. Um. I think it's something that they could do in the future. They just need to re-examine how they're doing it. And, like, you know, the Try Guys is all about them doing things that they don't know anything about. 
but like usually they also are talking to an expert or a representative of the hobby or the activity or the experience um and if they don't want to if they don't want to approach their live streams with the same level of you know research and care that's perfectly understandable sometimes things can just be fun um I just feel like this wasn't really fun, but then again, there's a lot of people in the comments who just like them and will like them no matter what they do. So if a lot of people had fun, I guess it's not really a problem. But Allie and I were both sitting there being like, wow, what, like, what the heck? I bet there's a lot of people who are Pokemon fans who still enjoyed it. And you know, like, Questy and Johnny, you know, be being funny, like, Questy's always like, not knowing what's going on, and that's, like, part of the charm, and he's such a funny guy, and he's such a good sport about these kinds of things, um, and that's why I really like him. Um, Johnny, I think, it seemed like, got, like, deeply sad at one point, and went from, like, trying to guess the answers to just being, like, I don't know, B, I don't know, C, whatever, I didn't grow up with Pokemon, and, like, it was, like, infectiously sad. As it gets to a point where, like, yeah, it is, like, a Pokemon quiz that was, like, they weren't even trying to, like, work out, like, what Pokemon evolves into either Silcoon or Cascoon. Um, that's a Generation 3. Zack doesn't even know what that one is. Um, Questy and Johnny have no idea. It's not like they're trying to work out, like, well, like, maybe Silcoon sounds like a coon, wor like, Wormpool maybe sounds like a worm, so maybe that one, or maybe they'd, like, use logic to try and guess some other one that also wasn't the right answer, whatever, but. Didn't think it was, didn't think it was a very good stream, and I think if the Try Guys are gonna do this kind of thing, it might behoove them to learn what works and doesn't work. Even if a lot of people like it, it doesn't mean you can't improve upon it. But also it doesn't mean that anybody's like, dumb for not liking, for, is dumb for liking it. You know, if you derive enjoyment out of it, that is awesome. Um. Can I do this this way? I think if I teleport both of these things to there, they will, like, be on top of each other, you know? Yeah, like that. Okay. Alright, but... I'm gonna close out this episode, I think. Um, don't know how much longer I'm going to be in this dungeon. This is, like, supposed to be a huge, huge dungeon. That is the entire point. So... Where am I trying to take this? Okay. Yeah, alright, well, until next time, thank you for watching, thank you for listening to me ramble. Um, look into Transistor, that's a really cool game. Uh, I'm the Comic Foil, I'll see you later. You know, I really have, like, no place to talk about, like, what an engaging, like, gameplay stream is. It's not like I think what I'm doing here is, like, fantastic either.